Welcome to Ecotopia, where we will talk about industrial ecology. So what is industrial ecology? Industrial ecology is the study of the physical, chemical and biological interactions and interrelationships both within and between industrial and ecological systems. In general, the concepts of industrial ecology include the idea of making industrial system emulate more efficient and sustainable natural systems, a change from linear and open process to cyclical, a closed process so the waste from one industry is used as an input for another. The third one is an emphasis on harmoniously integrating industrial activity into ecological systems, the study of material and energy flows and transformations. Two of the industrial ecology goals are cyclical system and sustainable development. Industrial ecology aims to transform our industrial system linear nature into a cyclical one where waste are recycled as energy or raw materials for other goods or process. The Eco Industrial Park in Kalembok, Denmark is a highly integrated industrial system that maximizes the use of byproducts and reduce waste that leave the system. Promoting sustainable development at the global, regional and local levels is the main objective of industrial ecology. The United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development defines sustainable development as meeting the needs of the present generation without sacrificing the needs of future generations. Industrial ecology should encourage the sustainable use of renewable resources while minimizing the use of non-renewable resources because industrial activity is dependent on a consistent supply of resources, it should run as efficiently as possible. Sustainability framework includes pollution prevention, waste minimization, total quality and environmental management, dematerialization, decarbonization, life cycle assessment or LCA, design for environment, industrial symbiosis or IS. To achieve the sustainability, carbon footprint and ecological footprint is helpful. Now, let's take a look on carbon footprint and ecological footprint. A carbon footprint is a measurement of how your actions affect the quantity of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere as a result of the burning of fossil fuels. It is expressed as a weight of carbon dioxide emissions produced in tons. Your carbon footprint size is determined by multiple factors. Your personal footprint is composed of emissions from a variety of sources, including your daily commute, the food you eat, the clothes you buy, everything you dispose of, and so on. The larger your carbon footprint, the greater the environmental impact. Why should you know your footprint size? The carbon footprint is a key tool for determining how a person's actions affect global warming. This is why, at the very least, on an individual scale, everybody who wishes to successfully contribute to reducing global warming must measure and track their personal carbon footprint. How to reduce carbon footprint size? As we can tell, it's hard to get someone's exact carbon footprint. To reduce carbon dioxide emissions, we can use renewable energy sources like wind or solar instead of using fossil fuels. Plus, the government can also introduce new laws or taxing companies based on the greenhouse gases emitted. Carbon capture technology that can capture carbon dioxide emission when burning fossil fuels are also available. The gas is stored underground where it cannot escape into the environment. To halt climate breakdown and avoid its worst impacts, we need to do two things. Shift to a low carbon economy and protect our best natural allies in the fight against climate change, especially forests, which stash away large quantities of carbon. Drastically cutting greenhouse gas emissions will require everyone, from individuals to industries to countries, to vastly reduce their carbon footprint. Now, let's move to ecological footprint. The ecological footprint measures human demand by a person or a community on the natural resources. Every human activity use biological productive land and or fishing ground contribute to our ecological footprint. It includes crop land that growing food for humans and animals, grazing land used by animals for meat and dairy, forests such as wood products, carbon such as land requires to absorb the carbon that release, fishing ground which is the primary production for fish catches, and lastly, build up land such as homes, factory, roads and power plants. 
ecological footprint measures in global hectares and it's making the data and outcomes comparable across national boundaries. Ecological footprint varies based on the country. In different countries, there are different amount of electricity usage, different eating habits, and transportation types. Ecological footprint also varies based on the person. There are numerous factors that affect an individual's ecological footprint, and it can differ from person to person. For instance, being a vegetarian affects the amount of area needed to raise the animals that person will eat. Other factors include the use of renewable energy such as solar panels in home and also transportation commute to work or school. Ecological footprint can be reduced by looking at biocapacity. Biocapacity, also known as biological capacity, is the capacity of an ecosystem to generate usable biological materials and to absorb in a carbon dioxide emission. A region is considered unsustainable if its ecological footprint exceeds its biocapacity. Ecological footprint is different from carbon footprint. Ecological footprint evaluates human activities and discarded resources, whilst carbon footprint provides the amount of greenhouse gas emitted from various sources each year. Ecological footprint's purpose is to achieve sustainable development and a deeper understanding of human activities in environmental effect. Ecological footprint and carbon footprint share similarities, where they function to study the effect of human activity on the environment. Carbon footprint is an existing element included in the evaluation of the ecological footprint of a country. The two terms promote effective steps to lessen environmental impacts through carbon reduction policy, lifestyle changes, and initiatives from corporate or governmental bodies. We can calculate the ecological footprint and carbon footprint through calculators available online. You will need to be aware of how you commute to work, what your usual diet is, how much you drive or fly, the size of your household, or what type of electricity that grid provides you. And it will help estimate your footprint sizes. That's all from us. Thank you.